Okay, um, good morning everybody. Um, my name is Sue Pearl. Uh, I have, um, my company is Felt Better, uh, which probably says it all. Um, I'm a felt maker. I've been making felt now for, oh, probably 25 plus years, in various forms. I do wet felting and dry felting. I make everything in felt. You know, if you stand still long enough in my house, you get made into felt. Actually, that's not quite true. But uh, it's lovely to be on the virtual village hall this morning. And we're going to be doing needle felted pictures. Now, I have fantastic a webcam. So I'm actually going to um, change to the webcam, the, the other camera, so that you'll be able to see what I'm doing. So just Bear with me a minute while I just change screens and um, here we go. Change the camera. Yay. Okay. Um, if you'd like to make comments, there is a comment box, but it might be that I can't quite see it while I'm working, but I will check up ever so often to see how things are going. Okay, so this is one of my needle felted pictures. I've lifted up, so only probably better like that. And the whole thing about needle felting is we use um, a felting needle. Some of you may be familiar with this. Uh, this is my holder, by the way. They do come with a little hook at the end. And, uh, but I do a lot of this, so my, fault, my holder really helps my fingers. And you can get lots of different varieties of this. There's one company called Clover that make um, a multi-needle fel felting needle, which is really good for doing needle felted pictures. This is a single needle, so I'll just show you my other needles. Uh, that needle I just showed you was a general needle, so that was a triangular needle, and you can Actually, I don't know if you can see on this webcam, but if I turn it round, uh, just glinting there, it's got three sides, and along the the edges are little nicks, only that much. The rest of it is just the stem. It's just that much which does the the knitting together of the fibres. So this is known as dry felting, and this one is a star needle and it's finer than the other one but it's great for doing details so if i want to do things like the little flowers here um i would use this because it's it it gives a um, a greater i would say sculptural quality so you can actually make it almost 3d uh the other things i have here i have a um, a multi-needle, which is like the same holder. And, and I use this quite a lot for um, covering areas. It's very good for doing that. Um, I also do three-dimensional needle felting where I make animals. So this I use for when I cover with the, with the final coat. Um, the other thing, which is, these are very... Um, easy to get hold of. Um, this is, these are uh, triangular needles in here, but you can you can put any needle in. It's very easy to to change the needles. You just open it up like that and pop it open, and these are just hooked in. So you can have one needle, two needles, three needles, and um, you can change it to a different type of needle. There are other needles available, like reverse needles, but we don't need to go into that now. Uh, so what I'm going to be using, I the, the wool that I use mostly is this, which is um, a Scandinavian wool. And the reason I use it is because it's got a very short staple. I'm sure you can see that the fibers are, are short as opposed to a merino, which I have a bit here somewhere. Um, 
I did have, ah, in front of me. Um, merino is a much longer fiber. So you'll see the fibers when you needle them in. However, it is good for adding um, texture or, or details maybe if you wanted to put some lovely clouds going across the sky, um, like the mare's tails that we someone, sometimes see in the sky when there's going to be a change of, of weather. And this, you can use this, but on the whole, I tend to use um, the, the Scandinavian wool. Uh, I do have felting kits on my website for sale. If you would like to visit it, my, I have a, a website here, which is feltbetter.com. And uh, there's lots of things on there, uh, photographs of work I've done, um, some some interesting articles, a history of needle felting and other things, and also some videos which show you how to make, uh, how to do needle felting, how to do wet felting. And um, so the other thing I use is sometimes is pre-felt. So pre-felt is made by crossing fibers. So I got, I have here, a little bit of pre-felt that I've made already. And I have to say, I've made this using merino wool and a wet felting solution. But what it does, it just holds the fibers together and it means that I can cut um, shapes out of it like that and pop that on one side. And then I can use the shapes to add to my picture. So let's turn this one. I have a thing about turning things into heart shapes. I don't know why. And so I've cut a little heart shape here and I could add that in by using my felting needle, moving my scissors and I can just needle that in like that. Now the other piece of equipment, which you can see, um, which I use is my trusty foam pad. And these are very easy to get. I mean, they're all over the internet. However, I do have them in my felting kit, but also I get mine from uh, an upholsterer when they're open, of course, since we've been in lockdown. And it, I use one which is um, five centimeters deep. I think this one may be a little bit shallower, but uh, I made a mistake in my ordering on this on these. But um, they they are perfect because they stop the needle. It gives you something firm, and this is a blue foam, and the foam is really quite dense and it stops the needle going through and hitting your table and breaking the needle. The needles are sharp, beware. Uh, this is not something for young children to work with. And they also break quite easily. So you have to be a little bit careful with them. So when I'm not using them, I just pop them on the side of my, uh, my foam pad until I'm ready to to use them. So I, I usually have them all lined up at the bottom there. You can't see my bottom there. Um, and that would um, that would be ready for me to use. So now I'm going to show you how I get started. But before I do that, I'm just going to show you some examples of pieces that I've done. So here's a nice little picture. Um, it's the seaside. You can see I was desperate to get away during lockdown. And I, my mind was going, oh, I want to see the sea. Um, so a lot of things I've done have got sea and, and big skies in them. So this is my little um, seaside picture. They make great little vignettes. 
you know, get a frame from IKEA. You can get really nice cheap frames or or um, hobby craft and perfect. And they're great gifts as well. You can also do smaller pieces to uh, mount them on card and send them as a as a different sort of birthday card to somebody very special. Or you can use them, you can make a bookmark out of them and just they're just lovely and it's lovely to do. It's clean, you do it sitting down at the table. Um, just don't watch television while you're doing it because you've got that very sharp needle. I listen to all sorts of things on the radio. I love it. So just to give you some ideas of, um, uh, this is a, uh, a butterfly. And once you've made it, once you've done something like this, uh, you can cut it out and then sew it onto a, um, a jacket or something and it becomes a motif. If you wanted, after you've made it as needle felting, you could wet felting, well, wet felt it by using a soap and water solution, some little bit of warm water with a drop of uh, maybe washing up liquid, just a little drop, and then you could just wet it and then rub it, and it'll be totally permanent. Um, otherwise, sometimes the fibers will pull out because um, they've only been pushed in by the needle on the back. Also, you can make some lovely brooches uh, using this. If you, uh, you could cut this out and add it to a piece of um, heavy cotton and uh, put a pin on the back and it becomes a lovely brooch. Uh, this is something, oh, my friend did this, I have to show you, because I think there's a bit of Picasso here. I really like this. So you can see how you can lay colors over color and um, add various things. These are little circles that she's added and uh, you've got the background colors. So if you do something which is completely opposite itself in the color circle, you get a really, really lovely picture really striking so um here it shows you how i've added a couple of pieces of pre-felt that i made and you can also make pre-felt in needle felting as well and i'll show you how to do that and the other piece oh a little mountain little mountain here um and i've added a little snake in the grass and actually that's a piece of um that's a piece of yarn and you can add yarn as well and I'll show you how to do that. So let's get started. Now I always use a backing piece because you need to have something to needle onto. So what I have here is, I'll just cut this ready. I have my backing piece and this is actually a piece of commercial needle felt. So um, you can buy this. This is not the craft felt that you get from hobby craft and places like that, because that's made of um, poly, poly, polyurethane, polyester. This is wool. So you could use wool felt. Or if you've got some uh, an old jumper that you don't use anymore, throw it in the washing machine on a hot wash, shrink it down, and you can use that. Uh, it, you, it needs to be a dense to take the fibers. Um, anything that, you know, go to a charity shop and buy, maybe someone's selling a, um, a bit of a, an old tweed scarf or something, do the same thing, hot wash in the washing machine and then um, just iron it, dry it, well, dry it, iron it, that's probably the best way, and cut out a little piece and um, then you can use that as the backing piece. So you don't need to buy this specially, although my felting kits do come with two pieces of this so that it gives you a, you know, a, a, nice, a, a nice amount that you can work with. Uh, I'm just going to check and see if there's any, any um, questions in the, 
in the box. If I just bear with me a minute. Um, nope. So far, it looks like we're doing. Oh, yes. Sorry, I was on the wrong bit. Oh, lots of things. Um, I'm going to keep a watch later as I'm on the garden. Lovely. Enjoy. <laughs> Um, great. Okay, so let's go back to, uh, you've got my picture there. Um, I've got my picture hole as well. And I'm going to start by using, I think I'll do um, a bit of green. Oops. Yellow. I'm not in my studio at the moment. I'm in my I'm in my dining room because the internet from my studio is being a little bit difficult at the moment. So what I do is I get some fibers and I just spread them out like that. And I don't just use one layer. I will go over it. And with my trusty felting needle, I'm just going to punch the wool into that background. Now, when you do this, you must be careful because if you twist the needle, it will break and it will break and one bit will go in the foam and it, you won't be able to find it again, I warn you. So just keep it straight, keep that needle straight. So. And then what I do ever so often, I just lift it up off the foam and lay it back down again because it does tend to go into the foam. So just add more. And I want to make this quite dense. Now, I can't promise you that I'm going to be making a beautiful picture today. It's more technique. Um, if you have any questions that uh, desperate you need to ask me and I suggest that you send a message to my um, you can ask me questions on my website I answer all emails I get from it it goes directly into my email box so please if you've got anything you want to know about uh, any felt courses I do or anything to do with needle felting uh, or anything really, um, please just write to me. I promise I answer everybody. So, so I, as you can see, I'm building up the colour. I'm adding as I go. So my bit of grass here. And it, it's actually very... Uh, what can I say, very therapeutic, very meditative, especially if you had an argument with somebody and you need to take it out on your on your needle felting. It's, it's great. It's a bit like having a voodoo doll. In fact, you could make a picture of them and then needle felt them. And if you need to draw, oh, I don't know, I didn't. I thought I brought a pen in. I probably haven't. Um, you can sort of uh, draw some lines on your on on your backing so that you can see. Um, no, I haven't got it. Sorry. Um, so that you can see where you're going. You or what you can do is sometimes I I pull my fiber out like that and gives me a defining line. So this is going to be a hill here. So I know I can work up to that line. Of course, the other thing you can do is, um, getting my yarn here, I've got some um, knitting wool here that I have, uh, I'm making a fair isle jumper at the moment. So this is left over from that. And what I can do is use that as an outline. So you can carefully keep your finger out the way. You can needle felt that down like that. And that gives you a lovely, lovely outline to work to. 
and just you, you need to give it a, a bit of welly otherwise it won't go in but that that will let's pull that open a bit that will give you an idea of where you want to work to so i'm going to bring this down a bit so let's bring that down there make this my hill Okay, so I'll just snip that off there and there. And then I can carry on building this up. And what I can do is I can add other colors in. So, okay, I've got another green here. I can blend that in together so that you get this lovely watercolor effect of the colors blending. I hope you can all see that. And then I can I can just snip off if I don't want to go any further with that color and all the time I'm just working it in I can see there's a little bit of a gap there so I can just fill that bit in there and the other thing I wanted to show you because I thought this would be quite fun I don't know if you've all heard of Angelina I love Angelina a bit of this, you know, goes a long way. So Angelina is fantastic stuff. It's completely, uh, you know, non-organic. However, it does have, uh, is this the bondable one? No. Um, it does have wonderful qualities. That's it. So what you can do is you can mix some of this gorgeous stuff in with some wool or just lay it down like that and give it a bit of glitz and when you've finished your work what you can do is get a, an iron you must put a piece of paper down paper um Greaseproof paper, tracing paper, brown paper, anything um, that is going to come between the iron and the Angelina, because this is what you what they call heat bondable Angelina, which means it's going to bond into a solid piece. And if you you can add some color over, let's pop some some more green over there so the angelina will come through and it will it will shine so you'll get these lovely little glinty bits i'm sorry i haven't got a um, an iron handy but I, I can tell you it does work and um, you can get it in loads of different colors i've got all sorts of colors that i can play with it's it's wonderful so you could maybe do a lake with some uh, Angelina glinting on the surface um, to make it a fairy lake. Uh, what I would do is cut off any long hairs that I have that I didn't want. I'd just give it a bit of a shave like that. And then just carry on. So you've got lovely glinty bits. That's, that's where the fairies live, I think, up on, up on the hill. And the colors that they come in when I've got here, green, or I could have used some of the green, um, this gorgeous purple, and they've all got that sort of hologramic effect. So they, they sort of change color as they go. And, um, oh, I've got a whole mix there. It's amazing. I, I get these things out, haven't seen them for 
for, for ages. It's really lovely to see them. And so that you can do that with, with Angelina. And um, here's my, let's do some wispy bits with some merino wool. Oh, I could actually, I should do some blue for the sky. This is a beautiful sunny day, as you can see, with this almost turquoise blue sky. Not turquoise, but it's a very, very blue sky. But you see how quickly you can build up a picture. And I often use the um, my iPad uh, for, for inspiration or to get a, a view, maybe something like the Lake District or... In fact, one of my pictures that I did was of the Lake District and or a postcard, favorite postcard, or even you could do this with maybe a painting that you like and you can you could do the painting in needle felt. There are so many different ways of um, expressing yourself. I've got a bit of extra blue sky in here. And then what I wanted to show you is how I would strand that that wool across. So, so I've got my lovely blue sky. And I realise the one thing I haven't got is any white for clouds. But you'll have to imagine that we're going to be using some clouds somewhere. Uh, oh, I have got something I can use, yes. So I'm not going to do the whole thing. I'm just going to show you how I can strand some, here's some, this is nice. So I've got this. I've got this has got actually some silk in it so I could do some very wispy wispy clouds coming over it's one of those beautiful days when there's very faint clouds in the sky Mare's tails, I think they're called, isn't it? Mare's tails. So, there. You get a really lovely effect. So, just to show you how you can, how you can create as you go along. Now, really, what we need is the sun. But I've got some sun. So let's pop some more beautiful blue sky down and we'll have the sun in all its glory now i've put that down a bit thick i should really have done this in stages but never mind now if i was using my i'll show you how i would use my multi-tool uh, i use this one here so it works much quicker. You get a much denser effect and you don't get so many holes showing. Um, the thing about needle felting is of course you get, you do see these puncture holes, but um, if you wanted to wet felt on top uh, afterwards, that's fine because that actually gets rid of the, of the puncture holes. So you, you do, you treat it, a bit of grass in that one. That was obviously for some sheep that was grazing in Scandinavia, it's nice to know. They bring their bits of grass with them. As long as it's not moth, I try and live in a moth-free environment. The other thing you can do is in your hands or even with a, with a brush, maybe a, a cat brush or a dog brush or even a hair brush you can mix you can blend colors together let's move that out of the way uh, just by pulling like this and then 
you can use that and you get a lovely watercolour mix of colours. Another bit of grass, go away grass. And I'm going to have the sun, I think, peeping out somewhere. Oh, it's a nice bright yellow sun. Oh, it's one of those gorgeous days, isn't it? Let's just have the top part of the sun. I think it must be midday because the sun is at its peak there. So just fold that back, make it a bit more intense. And then if you want to do it, maybe a little haze around the sun, you could do that just by pulling out the fibers really finely. Yeah, lovely sunny haze. Bit of blue that needs filling in there, I think. Oops, I keep forgetting that you're the camera's there and I, I don't want to cover up anything for you. There we go. Over there. Right now, let's let's look at our hill. It's looking a bit bare. Um, I think I'm going to add some more colours in. So again, I'm going to do a bit of blending. I've got a nice dark green here. Uh, it's uh, depends on the vegetation. I think we can say. So let's do this one. Also, it blends nicely with my dark green outline. And once I've done that, fill in those spaces, I think we might put some lovely mountain flowers there, some, some bright colours, because it's looking a bit somber I think I like bright colors 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 are good I live in a colorful world bit of green there fill in that bit now let's put some let's put some flowers in oops that needs pulling over so you just pull it gently with your needle just very gently just to make sure you get a good dense density of color and don't want to see that white underneath and of course you can get this backing in other colors as well. Right, so there's my mountain showing there. And um, I want some bright, bright colors. And let's have some, a bit of pink, I think. And maybe a bit of purple. Ooh, yeah, a bit of purple. And my favorite, red. Okay, so I'm going to use my other needle now. I'm going to use my star needle. And I really like the star needle because you can really concentrate on, 
on doing some really delicate little pieces. So what I do is I use, I hold my wool up like that and with a needle, I'll just get that going. And then with my scissors, I'm just going to cut that bit off there. So I can just concentrate on making that a spot of color. So then I'll just put an, another bit in. Again, hold holding the wool back. And just doing a little spot with this star needle and cutting that. And there. So oh, put a bit of purple. And then if you've got any interesting wool around the place, anything that left over from anything that you've done, you can add that as well. So let's just take that bit off. And so I discovered that I had, let's move that to one side, that I had, where did I put it? I had this, which is gorgeous and to be honest, I've never used it. So I thought I could actually use this maybe as extra little flowers or really for anything. So add that in. See, as long as you needle it in well, it works. You can get you can get lovely little little tiny spots of sparkle really love sparkle. It's a bit like dressing up your piece like Strictly Come Dancing, you know, with all the sequins and everything. Pop that off. Now I'm going to um, put a little house, I think, up on, up on the hill. Uh, and I'm going to use my needle felt that I made. So just find my pre-felt. So there's my pre-felt. And I'm going to cut a little square out of it. Now you can get um, commercial pre-felt uh, like the backing sheet that I've got and they come in all different colors so you can really go to town and and do something interesting this is going to be my little house so I'm just going to pop my house there and I'll just needle that in place And the, obviously the commercial needle felt is much denser. It's more like this. So you can, you get a greater density of color, but this is just one I've made. So I thought I would show you but just the basic, but you do have to, you do have to put it down properly. So you do need to make sure it sits in well. And then it's got the cloud behind. And then you can add to it. I'm going to add a, a red roof. So I'm going to use this as my roof, stretching it out. As I showed you with the edging. I'll use the other needle for that. This is the general purpose needle. Oh, that's top of my roof it comes off a little bit at the side and 
just trim that off with the scissors and then do the other side as well. I hope you can all see what I'm doing properly. It's um, sometimes you forget what you're doing. And that I have an audience. <laughs> Mind you, I'm talking to myself, so. i just snip that off there. And I just want to bring it down a little bit more at the side here. So just bring it down slightly more. Quick snip. And then of course, we need to add some, some doors and windows. So we don't need that bit there, overhanging. So let's put some, um, I'm going to do, I think a pink, a pink door, pink doors. Just fluff that out a bit and just, Again, hold it. And it's like drawing with wool. Or rather painting with wool, I think probably is more like it. And I'm just making a solid door here. I'll just go over that a bit. Just pulling it out gently with my fingers. That way you can stretch it out. There's my little door. I think fairies live in this house because they've got nice sparkly path in front of them. And then I'm going to do a couple of windows. You know, during this lockdown period, um, you know, you go for walks and probably sometimes you walk in areas that you've, that although you pass it every day in the car, that when you're walking, you see things much clearer and in more detail. And I love looking at houses. I always love looking at houses, but sometimes you look at the trees in the street. I'm very lucky where I live, I've got lots of trees around me. And sometimes you see people have put little doors at the bottom of the trees. And for the, I don't know whether it's for the frogs or the fairies or just a little bit of whimsy, but I love to see that. because I don't think you're ever too old to be, to not to believe in fairies. Is that right? Not to believe, to believe in fairies. You're never too old, that's it, yes. The not was in the wrong place. So there's my window and my door. So my little house is coming along nicely. Um, I could do a little path going up there. Let's do a little, little brown path, I think, just to take it along. So the postman knows where to go. I should be writing a story for children here, shouldn't I? So, there you go. Well, um, I think that that will probably show you the basis of needle felting. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pull it gently off the backing. You can see that I should have pulled it off before. And <laughs> you have to do it regularly, and I haven't been doing it regularly enough, but just pull it just be a bit gentle with it right <clears throat> and that will give you an idea of what we've done 
um, with mixing colours, adding a little bit of Angelina maybe, um, taking some fibres across uh, across the sky and using different wools, whether it's um, knitting wool or whether it's, it's I'll do another bit here, uh, or, or whether it's uh, a different type of wool like merino. I have this lovely merino and creating creating different effects. I think that's really the answer. In fact, I will show you with one of the pieces I did before. That one. Um, this one is, I did a river coming down. So I mixed my colors in there. And this was a snow snow capped mountain, and it's a little house at the bottom. You see, I got things about houses and sheep in the grazing, and a tree uh, with a nice clumpy. I'll move it that way. <laughs> nice clumpy green, and um, I think this was a brown bird flying in the sky. I'm not sure what. Maybe it was an eagle. I think we could say it's an eagle. And here's some crops growing in in uh, on in the fields. So you can do really. Um, you can make some wonderful, wonderful pictures, and very simple, very absorbing, very mindful. So it's very. It's good for concentration, losing yourself in what you're doing let's go back to uh the other the other um camera i think It'd be a good idea we can have a chat so that's it lovely so um i don't know whether there's any more comments um uh Ah, where can you buy wool and the needles from? I can see you've got very good scissors as well. Okay, so the scissors, these are great scissors. These are, I think they're called Fiskar. Fiskar. And um, what you can do with them, um, they, they have a lock. So just by pushing it down, they open and holding them together. And sometimes um, they, they lock. And they're really good. They're sharp. And I use them, you know, for sewing, for doing this, because you can you can get quite close. And also when I do my um when I do my uh, um wet felting, uh, I can also do a bit of shaving as well. And there sometimes you look at the back of, of this and it's uh, where's the piece that we've done, and it's a bit fluffy here a bit fluffy on the back so you could if you wanted to uh, give it a bit of a um a sheer a sheer uh my wool at the back um just have a, another look and see if there's any so that was a question about the woolen needles okay so on my website just in case and no one saw it before feltbetter.com uh, i do sell a needle felting picture pack which has the the foam and the needles and um, instruction sheet and a, a nice mix of of um, wools to use. Also, two pieces of the backing. Um, that's but there are lots and lots of needle felting kits out there on the internet. So you know, take your pick. So um, what else have we got? Let's have a look and see. Uh, needles very cathartic absolutely i agree with you um step out your stress um i'm not very good at drawing so, <laughs> so yeah i think you can um you could just draw you could sh just do a little squiggle on there and work from work from that just do a little you could you could draw with a barrow on here and then just fill that in but of course it doesn't have to be a picture it could be something you know really um 
really organic or a, um, a bit like, uh, where was my friend's piece? A bit like this. I mean, that. I think that is great. Do I keep forgetting where the camera is? I think that piece is great. It's um, It's got so much life in it. And just by using bright colors on, you know, colors opposite each other on the, on the color wheel. So red and green are opposite, blue and yellow are opposite, and it makes them stand out. And you don't, you don't need much of that, that opposite color. It's just, it really gives you a, um, it, it just, it sings, it makes it sing. Um, uh, so, uh, are there, if you've got any other, any, any other questions, um, do you need a spare needle for needle felting? Can, oh, special needle, sorry. Yes, you need a special needle. And this is, this is the needle. Um, it's a felting needle. In fact, I'll take it out of my tool here. It's my holder. And this, this is the needle. It's got a little hook on the end. And if you've got the single ones and you wanted to have a holder, you could always put this through a cork. So you've got the cork as the handle and it just gives you a little bit of, um, of help, you know, just to hold, because holding this on its own can be a little bit, you can, it can tie you, but if you've got something like, uh, or a bit of um, FEMO that you can harden up or anything that gives you a little bit of uh, a handle. Um, I, as I said, I, I use I use this, but it's very it's a very expensive toy. <laughs> and it's only because I do so much needle felting that um, I use it because it really helps my my hands. Um, what else can I tell you? Um, it, it is very cathartic. It's it's um, the materials are simple. They're not expensive, and really you can go around using. You can find anything around that that you can use to do it. But you do need that felting needle because although I don't think you'll be able to see it with my camera, um, it has got little nicks along the edge and those nicks um, knit the fibers together. So as you um, as you press them into the foam, um, it catches the fibers and it sort of knits it together. Uh, yeah, someone's answered about the, um, oh, if you don't like what you've done, oh, easy. If you don't like what you've done, oh, look, you could just pull it off, whoops wrong camera you can just put it off like that and start again so that's good that's a very good thing um oh someone's late to the party oh dear don't worry uh, i think this is recorded and it, you'll be able to pick it up anytime um so uh needle yes barb's done extremely sharp thank you i find it depends on how much you felted it yeah felting mixes the color so you can be hard to separate them Actually, it's not that difficult, but you only use little bits at a time. So I don't think that's really a, an issue. Um, very cathartic, yeah. Uh, th the only thing I have to tell you is um, needle stick is very painful. So keep your fingers out of the way. Just really keep your fingers. You you can use, and I do have um, felt uh, needle felting finger guards. Um, which uh, I use when I'm doing three-dimensional needle felting because th that you can possibly, um, you can get a little bit of accidents and I have had a few accidents in the past. So what it is, they're, they're little leather sheaths that sit over your the finger and thumb of the hand that you're not holding the needle with. So if you're holding your piece down and you're needling, it's leather and it it doesn't pen the needle doesn't penetrate you can get those on the on the internet as well um uh, i think i think that's oh bro brooches 
Um, no, my website doesn't show you how to make brooches. However, it's a very, very simple thing to do because if you um, saw my, I showed you my, um, my butterfly, you really do it quite, quite um, heavily. When I say heavily, I mean it's quite dense. And then you, if you back it so that there's the backing, um, and I'm not saying do anything quite as big as that, but if you put, you can uh, use like bonder web or even a fabric glue to put another piece of fabric on the back and you cut it out and you then you can put a pin and you've got a brooch. So it's really um, an easy thing to do. Also, as I said before, you could um, also just, you know, back it with another piece of fabric and cut it out and then you could sew it onto a, um, a jacket or a hat or even a bag um, and you've got something really, really, really different. You know, you it's original, it's yours, it's your art. And I think I think that's the thing that which really um that's that's the thing that moves me that I really like that. Uh link to my website. Um there might be, but I can show you again. It's feltbetter.com. Makes you feel better. Uh so come and visit me. Um, I keep forgetting to put new new uh, blogs on, but I will be doing that. So come and see what I've done. Got lots of pictures on there and uh, send me send me messages. I'd love to see them. Uh, always answer all my all the emails I get. So feltbetter.com. Um, so uh, yes, Village Hall has put my website on the chat line. Um, I think that that really um, says it all. I've given you as much as I can. Don't forget about the wonderful Angelina. You can get that online. And uh, if you get the bondable one, that is the best because uh, once you've done your piece, and I only use a tiny bit, oh, wrong way, there. I only use a tiny bit. But uh, if you use a bit more and you can iron it afterwards with a warm iron please do not forget to put a piece of paper between your your piece your needle felt with the with the angelina and the iron otherwise you will have a permanently sparkly bottom to your iron which isn't going to be very good if you're going to be ironing your husband's shirts so unless he wants to go to the office with um, some interesting bits on. Uh, so I think that um, that is the majority of everything I can, I can show you. One last thing, I think I'll just pop back to my webcam, and that's how to make a piece of needle felted pre-felt. So let's do that. Um, and then I think that will be, you will be, fully au fait with all that um that i know and then it's up to you ladies and please send me pictures of what you've done because i love to see it so um let's take some fiber here so when i want to make some pre-felt because i'm going to cut out shapes from it I'm just going to take some fiber. This is going straight on my mat, no backing here. So I'm going to lay down some fibers like that. And then I cross them with the fibers going in the opposite direction. This makes a nice dense piece of needle felt. And if I wanted, I could actually add um, another color in there so which probably give me um two-sided piece so i could use either side so let's pop that on like that and then this is when the multi-needle actually comes into its own so all i do is i punch this keep the needle nice and straight Take any stray bits in. 
if I was using a multi-needle, it's actually quicker. So let's go to this needle here. You can see how doing three needles at a time really works. If anyone is interested in these needles, I do have some to sell with um, the holders, with the needles. Uh, just write to me. They're actually not in my shop, but I have got them. And you can write to me and I can uh, give you the price. So once I've done like that, I'm now going to pull it off my backing. Carefully pull it. And I'm turning it over. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. Now, I always try and double up on my edge because that's always going to be the weak spot. Keep your nails out of the way. I've had a felting needle through my nail and out the other side before now. So we have to be a little bit careful. I don't want you all running to the a &E because of what I've shown you. I will not be held responsible. I'm pulling it up again. And I do this four times until it's a really nice, dense piece of needle felt. And the more you do it, the, the, the better it is. So that's side number three. And just going to finish it up. Side number four. So that's crossing those fibers one way, the other way, and back again. And then needling them. And you could do a whole little palette of these. So you could you could make a, a um, pile of you know different color squares that you can use to um, to create shapes for your piece. So now I can see this is a this is a nice um, a, a nice piece here. It's a little bit hairy on this side. I'm just going to. And then with my scissors, with my nice little scissors, I can now cut really nice sharp shapes out of that and needle that down. Doesn't have to be um, a bit fuzzy. I can do really, really nice sharp shapes. Let's pop that on there a bit. Do it there. So with my needle, so you get a much more um, graphic effect. There. So I think we probably covered just about everything. And let's go back to the other camera. And that's it. Uh, I can see you all. Oh, let's just see if there are any more comments. Um, can you use any type of fabric? Um, this is for the backing sheet, I think. Uh, I think you 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 mean uh, it needs to be something which is a bit uh, what can I say shrunk so shrink an old jumper as long as it's wool it'll shrink uh, in the washing machine something you don't need anymore um, and it needs to be a certain amount of thickness so you you need to have something which acts it's got a bit of body to it an old blanket an old wool blanket if you see anything or pick one up in a charity shop. Uh, that's really good. Um, 
snip a bit off the off the dog's blanket and throw it in the washing machine and anything that you if you if you're going to use something which is woven or knitted it needs to be shrunk down by putting in the washing machine first on a hot wash and it will shrink down enough that you can then once it's dry give it a quick press and you can use it as your backing sheet or you can um order uh the the needle felted fabric online it's got different names it's some people call it a needle punch felt um some of it is needle needle felted pre or pre felt so pre felt needle felted squares or uh, needle punch felt so just check that I have to my put my glasses on check the last thing uh, what is the number of the needles um so uh this is uh the the my general needle my my um uh triangular needle is 36 gauge so no third yeah 36 gauge is the uh is the felting needle the general one and the star needle the final one is a 38 gauge is that funny it should be the other way around but i'm sure it's not um but it, i know it's 38 and 36 but i really think that the 36 is the is the um the other one the the triangular needle and the star needle is 38 uh those are my two main ones as i said there is there is a reverse needle, but that's really only used if you were making a needle felted animal and it it's used to bring up the the coat so you can get a nice fluffy coat. Uh, when I make needle felted sheep, I see if I can get locks of of sheep from uh, you can get them on the internet and I use those I needle those in for their their um uh, fleece so and then i give them a bit of a, a i shear them so that it's not too long um i do make animals yes i do make lots and lots of animals and there are lots of pictures on my website uh, i do lots of um felt courses uh, and you'll see information on on my website so um i Yes, 38 star, yeah, which is a star, which is a triangular needle. Okay, so just quickly, uh, the triangular needle has three sides. So um, oh, I can never, never know whether you can actually see that. As I turn it, you can see it's got three flat sides. Um, and I don't know the light, light catches it. And... Each each side, each edge has got little little um, nicks put in it. The star needle is actually in. If you cut it across, it's uh, a cross. So it's in section. It's a cross, and again, it's got little um, nicks all the way up. And sometimes it's difficult to tell. But you can get, if you've got nice long nails, not I have, but you can get them in this like four grooves all, all the way around because, of course, it's got, it's made up of a star. Um, what I sometimes do is I paint a little bit of nail varnish on the top of my star needle so I know which one is which. Um, Oh, you can see it close up. That's great. That's great. Uh, so remember, the star needle is for details. And when I'm making my 3D, my animals, I use it for making maybe mus muscle contours and I, uh, valleys in the eye, um, faces, the muscles on the face. Uh, it, it's, it's a sculpting. It's a sculpting needle, whereas the... The triangular needle is the general needle. So, um, 10 past 12. Um, I hope you've all enjoyed that. Please come and see my website and send me messages. And if you do this, 
Um, please send me pictures of what you've done. And don't forget, you can get felting kits from the shop on my website. And um, I think that that's it. It's been lovely to see you all. Well, I, I can't see you, but you can see me. And I hope I see you again. So thank you very much and have a good day. Bye.